Logia gang, Logia gang, Logia gang. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got it, boys. We got it. Yeah. Woo! Logia gang. Once upon a mealtime, a boy unlocked the magical world of the Green Giant. Who showed him his delicious golden sweet corn. Polly P works here. And uh, yeah, yep, hit it around the head. Green Bull, Mr. Aramaki is a Logia, and he is the coolest Logia I think we've ever seen in the series. Look at this jolly green giant guy. Look at him. Look at him go. Fantastic. So uh, there's been a lot of talk I've been hearing recently about his sort of views about those countries who aren't associated with the world government, how he's uh, prejudiced or whatever. Here's the thing, though, I'm kind of vibing with it because finally, after what, like almost two decades, we have a, another evil reign because I swear everyone else is like this morally gray kind of good guy, which is fine. That's not, I'm not saying that's bad, but it's nice to have like a diverse mentality amongst the Marines. I also like how, and this is something I kind of picked up on recently, um, the animals uh, that the admirals are named after. So, you know, it's like, a, it's a color and animal. The animal judges their temperament on justice because a pheasant, for example, can be aloof. Aki Inu being a red dog, a dog is loyal and very vicious towards anybody who sort of looks toward their master in a unfavorable way. And Aki Inu guards the sanctity and values of the world government. So that works. Kizaru is a monkey, so he's aloof and non-caring, but he does his job just in the most lethargic way possible. Fujitora, a tiger, solitary animal, kind of goes his own way, does his job, kind of, but not really. And then we have Mr. Green Bull, a bull charges recklessly in one direction. That's what he's doing right now. He's charging recklessly in one direction towards Luffy. There is no white. There is no gray. There is this black evil mentality that's what he's on that's not that's not bad though i don't think that's bad i think that's diverse because we don't really have anybody quite that simple-minded in their views there could be more like there could be more detail about why he feels this way and why mentality is the way it is i think i was right though about his view of justice because it is quite simple it's kind of like a natural form of justice like i was talking about in my one of my green bull videos it's very simplistic it's if you're in you're in if you're out you're out and i don't care about you and that's pretty that's pretty good if you ask me it's simplistic but it's good because we don't have anybody quite like that moving on though i like how yamato was able to uh deck him in the head give him a good bonk it's further showing that she is powerful and capable of handling herself which is nice i do like how momonosuke can use bolo breath i think that's very funny though it's very interesting that aramaki points out that momonosuke's ability is quite unique in comparison to kaido which makes sense because kaido's ability literally states what color he's supposed to be which is a blue azure dragon it's very interesting too when you think about how momonosuke's fruit looked it wasn't even pink and it wasn't like this weird pineapple thing like the uh fish fish fruit model azure dragon supposed to be it was just like apple if i remember correctly right i wonder does that mean he's technically different from kaido like he's the same in quotes but because of his color he may by chance do different things and then we don't even know if he has a if he has a uh, a hybrid because if he has a hybrid that would be interesting because is it like the same hybrid as kaido because as we know hybrids kind of run the gamut of being whatever hell for example pell has both bird wings and human arms whereas somebody like marco just has bird wings he's up just a harpy whereas pell's like a bird man so i don't know that's something to look forward to in the future if momonosuke gets any uh development outside of wado also boom baby we were right about cobra getting axed though to be fair uh everybody and their grandmother was kind of thinking about that though for what how long has it been like two or three years so that's not a unique take 
but Sabo getting the blame for it does bring more context to what happened. I still hold that fast in my belief that it was Lucy who gave him the um the old finger pistol in the head. But it being blamed on Sabo is very interesting because now Sabo is being elevated to the same level as Dragon. So I wonder, do the other revolutionaries actually believe that Sabo killed Cobra or what's going on there? Also, it's very interesting that Lucy was in that scene that I showed in my Lucy theory that I just posted recently. Because we know, that's why I'm saying I think he is the one who killed Cobra because he's there. He... Kaku and Stussy are there. Why are they there? Why were they at the level? It doesn't make sense. Especially when, when we find out there is a new enemy faction, uh, the uh, Royal Knights, I believe they're called, or Knights of the Gods, which is kind of cool because now we have a, another set of antagonists to be concerned about in the future, which is great because now we kind of need those since uh kaido and presumably big mom though i don't think she's dead but for the sake of argument let's say both of those guys are down uh we need more antagonists now because we're running a little low i do think that lucia was the one that killed cobra but it's very interesting the uh language that's used to judge where vivi has gone they say vivi vanished which is kind of the same language that was used when um Moria kind of just disappeared from the battlefield when Doflamingo was about to axe him with all the pacifistas. So I'm going to hazard this guess based on a talk I had with a friend a little while ago about this sort of state of Vivi. We thought that Vivi got pawed by Kuma. <laughs> So from what's been said recently, I'm going to hazard a guess and say Kuma pawed Vivi, Sabo, and Karu far away from Mary Joas. And what may have activated that protocol is perhaps the mentioning of Luffy. Because what I'm thinking how it went down is there was probably a big uproar in the meeting of the kings where Cobra brought up how the world government kind of sucks and how the Straw Hats liberated his country and how the world government is responsible for letting monsters like Crocodile sort of run rampant. And then, of course, you know, the Dressrosa boys want to chime in about Doflamingo and then Neptune's going to co-sign and say, well, he did help my country as well. And then they're not really going to look at the Dressrosa boys or Neptune in this situation, they're going to look at Cobra and Vivi because they're probably going to be the main ones talking up Luffy and giving sort of credence to a pirate doing anything of value that the world government could not. Therefore, what could have happened is they asked Cobra, they're about to ask Vivi, and I think Lucy's the one doing all this since he's secret policeman. And then perhaps that's when Sabo steps in, fight breaks out, Kuma overhears Vivi talking to Sabo, or somehow Luffy comes up with an earshot of Kuma that maybe activates a protocol that Kuma still has in maybe saving any werewolf straw hats, or maybe it goes back to the whole thing about returning. What was that? The whole bit about him protecting the ship until a straw hat came up maybe there's like a weird ghost in the machine concept to where whenever luffy or the straw hats are mentioned it sort of ignites a spark in him and then he helps that particular person in any way he can just me spitballing but that could have been the case since he is the only guy and he's one of the few guys in the series that has a power that can initiate travel. He can send people places. And he can travel places himself. Uh, I do think in the future, though, he is going to die. And a straw hat is going to get his double fruit. I don't think it's anybody who's on the crew currently. Nor do I think it's Vivi. Because that was a theory going around, too. That Vivi was going to get the pawpaw fruit at some point. Which doesn't make too much sense to me. Because Vivi already has a moveset. She has the Peacock Slashers. And she has Karu. So though I do think Karu will probably have his own set of powers at some point. But 
seeing as how she does have the peacock slashes and she is a whip user and there aren't many whip users in the series at all there are about four there's Polly, shoddy chan Khalifa, kinda and then vivi herself there really aren't that many so seeing as how she got a weapon and then got an upgrade to that weapon and is very proficient with that weapon because you remember she decapitated crocodile back in the day i think it would be foolish to then give her an ability that has nothing to do with the weapon that she's proficient in using you kind of see what i'm saying i do wonder now what are the um following chapters going to be how long are we going to be in wano first of all because okay we're at 1054 there can't be too many more chapters in this uh in this arc though i do wonder is green bull going to defeat the guys who are standing against him now nekomamushi mamanosuke and the boys uh, i don't think yamato's getting like killed or whatever by green bull i think that's ridiculous mamanosuke telling her to stay out of the situation is very interesting because okay so what is he planning to do because we know he can't do anything or, or maybe he has another ability up his sleeve who knows but green bull seems to be one of the more powerful forces and the marines that we've seen he's certainly more powerful than fujitora fujitora i mean people could really be jazzed about him summoning meteors or whatever but the meteors couldn't burn Dolphamingo strings and got sliced up by the birdcage so i'm i'm not jazzed about fujitora in the slightest i think he's like a big set piece showman type guy for Oda to use to give the feeling of danger because i mean he's not going to pose any danger to any main characters but he does have the ability to create a lot of property damage and civilian death so i mean that's kind of like a oh no we got to stop the meteor for it crashes on all the townsfolk sort of situation it's it creates urgency he himself is not really that interesting but he is a good tool for creating urgency and the need to act moving on we are introduced to an investigation officer in the marines uh his name is kuro uma black horse uh since he's got like an animal color name i'm 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 wondering is he like a powerful guy he looks really cool though he's based on an actor as well akira kobayashi i hope i said that right he's given the same treatment as the admirals but i wonder if he's going to be important at all because he's not given the title as admiral but he's given the same sort of naming convention and his real name is tensei uh, yeah i wonder is he going to be important at all or is he just sort of like a world building guy to flesh out the hierarchy of the marines because there were two other people way back in the day who were going to be admirals but they aren't i think they're vice admirals um one of them was named after a rabbit i recall but yeah is he going to be uh treated like them or is he going to be like a real deal guy because he is the director of marine bureau of investigations so that sounds impressive but then again, too, we don't know anything about Kong, and Kong is above Akiina right now, so it's like, I don't know, bro. Also in the chapter, we see Shanks, who is, I feel, basically here to be a advertisement inverse set piece for Film Red, because he really has no business being outside of Wano, but I do like he does, uh, well, not really him, but the red-haired pirates do acknowledge Luffy as a, uh, a great pirate now which was the thing in chapter one so that's cool we are really coming around to a lot of pre-established promises being fulfilled and i think that's cool though he has no business being there at all and then we get a new scene with him talking to luffy on a uh, hilltop which feels like a film red scene for a tie into the movie and about the movie is this going to be canon like real talk no i'm serious because Uta is the daughter of Shanks, so, like, that's a big deal. Is that going to matter? And she knows Luffy personally, so I still wonder, is that even going to matter? Because that that's a big take to be the daughter of such an important character. But we'll see. It could be a strong world situation in which it's like, it's kind of canon, but not really. I do like that some of his new recruits, Shanks' new recruits, uh, think Luffy is a giant monkey demon. That's very funny because it kind of goes back to uh the uh rumors that the dress rosa townsfolk had about luffy about him being an eight foot 
eight foot tall giant monster man. So the legend of Luffy spreading far and wide is very funny. I, I like that. That shows you that his growth as a pirate is really actually real rumor he's important enough for rumors to be made about him i wonder if there are any rumors about other straw hats like uh like chomper you know about chomper i am waiting for the day that his monster point is in a uh wonder poster because i he's done it enough now that i can't imagine no one's taking note of it that's so strange to me but uh speaking about vivi bringing up the straw hats presumably in the meeting I wonder, is that going to give her a want a poster? Like how, I mean, it's not set in stone at the moment, but it's kind of weird that even with this chapter now, we don't have the updated bounties for the rest of the crew. And then who's going to get a bounty with the crew now? I assume Jinbei, though I, Jinbei's a weird one because he's not really notated as being an official stride, I think, by the world because uh, he hasn't been seen with them enough. So that I really don't know. And then Carrot's another one. Kara's a little bit more complex because she has been seen by a lot of people on Whole Cake Island when they were in the mirror world, her and Chomper. So she does have exposure with being with a member of the crew and a lot of people seeing her with a member of the crew. So she could get a bounty. Probably not though, but she could. Sabo's being allotted as the Flame Emperor, which is the title of the chapter. You see a lot of interesting flags in the demonstration plaza where someone's uh hyping up sabo and luffy uh, there's this one weird flag that looks like the world government flag but it has a little arrow coming out of it i wonder what does that mean is that a new faction that's being formed from um sabo's supposed assassination of king cobra there are a lot of those different flags i wonder if like any of those are going to now be the symbol of a uh new faction that's going to pop up in sabo's name because that's the one thing ace never really did and really we're kind of seeing sabo's story being the reverse of aces because ace was a solitary pirate went on his own for a while got caught up by newgate then was brought into the fold and then just became newgate's son right and then sort of just lived for newgate from that point forward with sabo he was found by the revolutionaries as a kid nearly dead in the water and then he rose up through the ranks somehow which is really weird when you think about it because even cough is not second in command nor is a someone as devastatingly powerful as bello betty no none of those people are second in command it's a uh, sabo which makes you think okay how good is sabo's hockey because the flame flame fruit development was super recent that i mean in real time that's probably like what a week a week a month so how powerful is his hockey or is it and you know what's weird what even position is even cough in the revolutionary army because even cough is the the uh leader of his own kingdom but we i don't think we ever get a straight answer to what he is in the revolutionary army nor do we get a straight answer what to what inazuma is very strange but yeah i wonder now what's going to become of sabo in relation to the revolutionary army i do think koala just based on her relation to jimbei and how much emphasis she was given in jimbei's flashback i think moving forward uh when we if, if we are getting into more sabo plot relevance that she's going to become a big star very soon i do wholeheartedly think that yeah I, I i'm very curious about this development with sabo also like with green bull in terms of weaknesses and this is i talked about this in another video but just based on what canonical flora can do in one piece so like the pop greens and then the giant monster that is the boing archipelago would would uh green bull be weak to fire or even ice no real question because pop greens can do like an enormous amount of things one of them um impact wolf even has the power of an impact dial so with those conventional methods of getting rid of vegetation work on green bull because he could just turn into a plant that can combat ice or heat it it wouldn't matter dehydration like crocodiles dehydration i can see that working on them that kind of makes sense but like the swamp fruit no because there are plants that grow in the swamp 
uh the light fruit no photosynthesis he could probably eat anything kizaru can throw at him maybe the gas gas fruit though plants can absorb carbon dioxide and probably other gases so especially if we're talking about the fantasiful flora of one piece yeah green bull is a very interesting logia and i do take him at his word that like he is the father of life or has the ability to create life that rivals the ocean yeah that's very true because he's wild he, I, I love his character he, he's amazing his powers are great but he's the most interesting logia i think we've seen like i talked about previously he has like a plethora of abilities that we haven't even seen yet and those we have seen are impressive i think with big mom we're going to have a big training arc because she's going to be motivated because she got uh, her spot taken by a bunch of punks so we're going to see her get motivated and perhaps see a uh, hot big mom return because she no longer has the privilege of uh, resting on her laurels as a emperor of the sea still wondering how buggy became emperor of the sea you know what the theory i have is about buggy becoming an emperor maybe captain john's treasure is an ancient weapon or at least part of one what was captain john's treasure and how he rose to the ranks of being a emperor because it's implied that during the events of wano the world is going crazy also what i don't understand the timeline between the warlords being abolished and the lovely because we don't know where kobe is because i thought fujitora was with kobe to fight hancock but now he's he was at the lovely fighting um the revolutionary army with aramaki so was that before or after because i would think that would be after because the abolishment of the of the uh warlords was probably brought about in that very meeting because of how much crap the Dressrosa boys and Cobra talked about Crocodile and Dofi. Like, no, like this system has literally ruined our countries and you did nothing to stop it. That had to have come out of that meeting. So I'm thinking the abolishment of the warlords and all the Marines sort of going out to capture them had to happen after the events of the Levely. Though I, and I do wonder how that worked out because Weevil is a very interesting case, but I really wonder what happened to Hancock because Hancock is the only warlord left that doesn't have her sort of plot relevant flaw being revealed because in each arc, something is wrong with a warlord who is controlling the island. They're doing something evil or they have a secret and that needs to be brought to the light. So her secret, of course, is slave mark on her back and same mark that's on her sister's backs. And that is propped up as a legendary, like, cursed eye of some sort that would turn you to stone if you looked at it. There is some mystery behind that to the people of Amazon Lily. So that needs to be brought out into the light, even though Hancock is not evil or a bad leader in any regard. But still, that's a plot point that needs to be brought up and revealed don't know how that will affect hancock but i think that's something that should be brought up which is why i think the sort of attack on amazon lily wasn't oh luffy's so great we all love luffy let's make a luffy fan club nah don't think so i think that hancock even though it's seemingly ridiculous because of the women in one piece hancock yamato and big mom are some of the most incredible physical fighters in, in the verse because hancock's freakishly strong and all the pictures of her and all media show her being freakishly strong. Stampede is a big example. Don't know if she can actually do that, but I'm not really convinced that she can't. I think that's real. Yeah, I think her doing that is real. And she was the first character outside of Luffy to have uh, Conqueror Saki in the uh, canon. So, yeah, she's got all three types. So, yeah, she, Kanakok is a big deal. So, yeah, I really do think even though she is powerful somehow she was defeated by kobe and fujitora because now with kobe there needs to be some sort of point in which kobe is propped up that's what i think but uh that's all i have for you today and uh catch you next week for 1055